Hello and welcome. My name is Grace Riley and I'm reporting for the American Spectator. Today I am joined by Billy Burley. Billy has quite a story and his story is the highlight of the new Transform documentary. Billy transitioned and lived as a trans woman for seven years until he detransitioned after finding hope in Jesus. Billy is now speaking out and sharing his story in the hopes of reaching people who are maybe going through the same thing and just in the hopes of shedding a light on the issue. Billy, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So just to start, I just want to go back kind of to the beginning of your story so that everyone understands as we talk. When did you first start thinking that you wanted to transition? How old were you and how did that sort of come about? My story really begins when I was in the first grade, when I was standing in front of the uh, school before the first bell rang, and I was looking around the schoolyard wondering, where do I belong? And a thought just suddenly popped into my head, God made a mistake, I'm a girl. It was such a strange thought that I, I dismissed it, but it was a very intrusive, consistent thought that plagued me all through my childhood, my teenager, teenage years, and into adulthood. And so I, I didn't know how to deal with it. And then, of course, with other childhood issues that I had, I was also sexually abused when I was in the sixth grade, which also contributed to uh, that dislike of my male body and thinking that maybe the thought is actually true. But when I was in my early 20s and I was finishing up my undergraduate work at LSU, I started having a breakdown. And in having a breakdown, I could no longer close the door on the closet for which I was pushing all of my emotions into. In other words, my typical coping mechanism was no longer working. So at that time, I actually had to seek help and I thought out a therapist uh, to try to help me with this disconnect between my mind telling me that I was a woman, my body telling me that I was a man. And in diving into the therapy, I thought I would be able to overcome this battle and continue life um, as a normal male. But I found out very quickly in therapy that this was going to be a long, drawn-out process. And uh, so it was actually after about six years of going through therapy and doing my own research uh, in the LSU library as to what was transgenderism, what was the cause of it, and what were the treatments for overcoming uh, this disorder. Because at that particular time, uh, the DSM three, the uh, psychological book uh, for which disorders are listed in, uh, and transgenderism was actually listed as a disorder at that particular time. Well, that certainly uh, has changed. It has. And the DSM-5, I, I don't know if that's still the latest and greatest version, but that has changed and uh, it's no longer considered a disorder. So the humans, their philosophy, the way that they look at this problem, it has changed. But I gotta say, God's word hasn't changed. And from where I am today, uh, that's absolutely what saved my life was God's word. Well, and that's so incredible. It really is. Before you continue, I would just, I would love to know, so obviously back when you were experiencing it, you were doing more of your own research and I understand that your therapist also helped along the way to the physical transition, but was anyone at this time giving you other options than physically transitioning? And how do you think that that's changed today? Because today there are new reports out that people are able to take the physical transition step very quickly and it seems that the culture and professionals are jumping straight to that step when someone has gender dysphoria. Yes, I'm seeing the exact same thing and hearing it with my conversations with others. It's even more interesting to see how that sentiment's changed, where now the center of the discussion seems to be the fact that professionals are pushing surgeries onto minors um, 
And even in your experience, you obviously you decided to detransition. Can you just speak to kind of the fact that even the way that things happened for you, it, it didn't work out to transition? And can you just explain why that is and what you experienced? And can you explain what led you to decide to detransition? Yes. So you, one would think if I took six years in therapy to actually come to this decision, and then at that point I received a note from my therapist to take to a doctor in New Orleans to start on testosterone blocker and on estrogen to start the transitioning process. Um, these The children nowadays are being uh, transitioned very quickly. Um, without addressing the mental health issues. I'm not a doctor. This is my observations from what I'm actually reading and from talking to people. And so I did go uh, to the uh, surgeon. I did uh, I convey that to the surgeon about these two therapists and their evaluations. And um, I went through the first surgery. And that was a horrific surgery of transition. So in the first surgery, it started bleeding. I was bleeding a good bit through this new man-made female genitalia. And the doctors had to put sand, a sandbag on my lower abdomen and also needed a blood transfusion and also plasma before that bleeding did stop. Did anyone warn you? beforehand about the risk of complication? The warnings were in the documents I signed before the surgery. But because I fully believed what the journal articles were telling me and what my therapists were conveying to me and their encouragement that this was the road that I needed to travel to find my happiness, I didn't care. I didn't care of the con possible consequences. I was now on this journey to find my happiness. And it's almost as though that I had blinders on. I was euphoric. I was chasing after this, this dream, this expectation. And that drove me into this surgery and also into a, a number of other uh, body and voice feminization surgeries. So I did that and lived seven years, presented seven years as a woman. Yeah. So then after that, so seven years hits, what flipped that switch? If you could just go into that part of your story and why there's hope. Absolutely. And this is my favorite part because in doing everything that the world suggested, that I needed to do to solve the disconnect between the thoughts of my mind and the physical reality that my body was telling me I was a man, I, I, I followed the encouragement, I followed the journal articles. But after seven years of trying, I actually found myself in a bigger pit of despair than I was prior to transitioning. Because not only did I have the problems that I had prior to transitioning, but I also had a whole host of new problems uh, after transitioning, not just the physical problems from the surgeries, but additional mental problems. In this pit of despair and believing that Jesus was there and that I was not prepared to, in my life to uh, meet Jesus face to face yet because I, I suicidal thoughts were coming into my mind, but I'm, I, was, I was rejecting them. But I did everything I could think of to live. So in this pit of despair, I actually had to pull my car over to the side of the road one day and I called out to Jesus. I, I called out to him. I told him that I am so sorry for everything that I have done, and that I give my life to him and I give all my problems to him and that he has to fix my problems. I have done everything that I could think of to, to resolve my issues, but I can't think of anything else and that he had to resolve them because I believed at the time that God helped those who helped themselves. If I prayed and I followed what I believed that needed to be done, God would help me. 
But what I actually learned was that God helps those who comes to the end of themselves. Mm -hmm. And I literally came to the end of myself. And the journey really turns around at this point because the way that I see it, I was on the road that I was navigating on by my own wisdom and it was taking me deeper and deeper into this dark forest. It was getting darker and creepier and I was losing hope. But in calling out to God, he did not pick me up and take me out of the forest. But what he did do was he changed my trajectory. He put me on a new road that would eventually take me out of these dark woods that I was in. That's really incredible. And it's just so encouraging to see that really God does use any circumstance or situation and he does redeem. And with that and your story considered, What's your message or advice to people who may be in a similar position to what you were, whether they're questioning what their gender is, whether they're wanting to transition or whether they've already transitioned and maybe they feel like it's too late if they still feel lost. What's your message to those people and also to folks who may know people who are in that situation? What's the best way to kind of reach them um, and show the message of hope? Great questions, and there are actually two questions, so let me take them one at a time. My message to those that are actually in this battle, I learned that there is a spiritual realm, and spiritual battles are very, very real. That we're in the daily battle with the world, with the flesh, and with the adversary. We're in the spiritual battle, we know that the Bible is truth and we need to read the truth and by applying truth, that would transform our beliefs. So my encouragement to those that are in this battle to turn to scripture, to turn to the word of God, because that is absolutely the truth. And this world, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of confusing messaging that has taken place. God made man and he made woman. That's what the Bible says. And then and the question about what to tell others that may have a family member that is going through this, how to come alongside them. And I got to share with you that I had family members that tried to share pure gold with me. They tried to share the truth of the, the word, the Bible with me. But I had such blinders on and I was going down this road and truly believed that I was moving toward my happiness. I did not believe them. And so my suggestion would be to come along some side somebody that is going through this. Ask them questions. Say, hey, would you mind if I walk with you? And then start asking questions. What is your objective? What are the thoughts that are in your head? Well, if you're looking at transitioning, how about we look at it together? And maybe by asking questions and diving into it together, they may be able to point out all of those risks that are there and that they're real, and that somebody like me blindly just stepped over but if somebody would have started asking me and walked beside me and dove in and said, let's look at this together. Wow, that's a lot of risk. Are you sure this is going to get you where you think you need to be to find your happiness and your peace? By asking questions that may actually help somebody to answer uh, those questions and turn from the path that they're going. Wow, that's, you know, that's really wise and really great advice. That I hope for people listening, wherever they fall on that, or even if they don't know anyone, just to keep in mind, especially since this is becoming a lot more prevalent now. And that just causes me to think as well, why I, I don't seem to see the pride crowd sharing your story or allowing those with your experience to speak to your experience and share your perspective. And I know for the documentary, I talked to William last week and he explained how the film was not allowed to be on Film Hub because it was so-called transphobic. So I was just wondering, do you have any any insight into that? Why would 
why would the pride movement not want to hear your story as it is valid? They don't want to hear the detransitioner stories at all because this actually brings question to the validity of the message that they're trying to communicate to the masses. And what we didn't dive into is everybody, I believe, and including myself, is seeking to find acceptance, significance, and security. And the, the LGBT community, as with a lot of the communities, are looking to embrace and love people. We will love you just as you are. Come express yourself. But this is the world's way of embracing people. As soon as somebody realizes that this is the wrong path and starts to say, questioning it, and say, wait, this, this isn't right. I still have the same problems I had before. This community actually starts rejecting those people because now they're questioning the narrative. So the LGBTQ community embraces as long as you don't question. But should we not question? Should we not seek ultimate peace, ultimate satisfaction, significant security? The only place we're going to find that is in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. But what they're going through does not align with scripture. So they're going to reject us and they actually try to silence us. Well, absolutely. And thank you so much for your courage in standing up and your courage in questioning things and in trying to reach other people with your questions and with your experience, because it's so important that people hear your story and understand your experience because of how real this really is. And of course, as you've said, you don't want other people to walk through the brokenness that's been associated with parts of your journey. So the fact that you're sharing your story is really amazing. And it makes me so happy to hear the redemption that's happened through it. And just thank you so much for joining me. And can you tell everyone where they can find the documentary so that they can hear the rest of your story in full? Yes. The documentary tells a wonderful story. I encourage everybody to go out there and, and, and watch it. You can also see aspects of the spiritual warfare that we're all in. So please go to transformeddocumentary.com. All one word, transformeddocumentary.com. And uh, email us. Share your thoughts with us, please. Thank you so much for joining me, Billy. Thank you. And you have a great and blessed day. You too.